Coming up on today's Locked On Angels, we are sending it in the past and reliving the greatest game the Angels have ever played. Game 6 of the 2002 World Series. And that's all right now in this oral history on Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Angels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day every single day. I'm Steve Granado, your host. You can follow me on Twitter at Steve Granado, G-R-A-N-A-D-O, and of course, our Locked On account at Locked On Angels. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. As mentioned, today we are diving in to an oral history here of Game 6 of the 2002 World Series, the Angels trailing three games to two against the San Francisco Giants. Today, as we are uploading this, is the 19-year anniversary of this game, and I wanted to go back and relive the action from maybe a little bit of a, maybe not a different perspective, but uh, some fresh eyes here. Nearly two decades later, we are celebrating this anniversary. Uh, Before we do get started, I want to give a absolutely massive shout out to this YouTube account that I found. Uh, I weirdly kind of named JZ, just the letters J and Z. They uploaded the original audio from Game 6. Uh, on uh, AM 570 that night. So we have the call of Rory Marcus and Terry Smith in the Angels broadcast booth that night. So we are going to hear some of the calls that you probably have not heard in almost 20 years. You're going to relive the action right here on Locked on Angels. So an absolutely massive shout out. I will link that audio, uh, that YouTube video here on the episode description and of course here on our YouTube channel as well. And I will implore you, if you're an audio listener, to go back and watch this one as well here on our YouTube channel that's uh, linked in the show notes as well. So let's go ahead and dive in to the greatest game in Angels history. Again, this is an oral history here of Game 6 of the 2002 World Series. Let's get started. The Angels have just had an off day after Game 5 in San Francisco and are currently trailing in the series three games to two. So a little bit of a pressure on the Angels at this moment as 44,506 fans are walking into Edison Field on October 26th, 2002. It's a night game here in Anaheim. It's 66 degrees at the ballpark with a slight breeze blowing out from left to right with some clouds in the sky as well. Kevin Apier is facing off with Russ Ortiz. And the Angels again, some pressure on this ball club right now as they hope to fend off and force a game seven. Kevin Apier loosening up. He has one more walk than he has strikeouts in the postseason. That's not a great statistic to have, but I have a feeling in talking to Kevin earlier today, he's relaxed and ready to go. I said, Kevin, you can do this. And he said, I know. So he is ready to go, and we'll see what happens here in game six of the World Series. That's Rory Marcus on the call with us here on this night. Again, AM 570. It's now 5.02 p.m., and here comes the first pitch of the ballgame. Apier into his windup. The first pitch of game six is a little high, ball one. Not much is going on here in these first couple of innings, innings one through three. The Angels again have Kevin Apier on the hill, who is looking pretty good, and by the way, wearing the number 27, which we have now known to be Trout and Guerrero's number. But hey, Kevin Apier on the hill here today, facing off with Russ Ortiz, who... For as good as Kevin Apier looked, Russ Ortiz looks even better. The Angels only have one base runner through the first couple of innings, and it's Troy Gloss in the second inning. The Giants threaten a couple of times, but don't really get anything going either. So Russ Ortiz and Kevin Apier are battling it out. Again, a nearly in front of 45,000 cheering fans, thunder sticks roaring in the crowd, chilly night here in October, and everyone bundled up in California cold weather out at Edison Field. We have a pitcher's duel on hand, and we had it for a while. (laughs) 
Coming up next, we continue our oral history of the greatest game in Angels history. But before we do that, this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. Why would you endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to have? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at your home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Head to rockauto.com right now and use all and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. rockauto.com So the Angels and Giants are battling it out on October 26, 2002. It's still 0-0 as we head to the top of the fourth. The Giants go in order and the Angels go in order. So Apier and Ortiz are just absolutely dueling it out. And Angels fans, Giants fans alike, and baseball fans around the country are just begging for something to happen in this game that isn't just ridiculously good pitching. So we go to the top of the fifth, and this is where the tides begin to turn in favor of the San Francisco Giants, with Dusty Baker at the helm, a team with Barry Bonds, Kenny Lofton, and many others on this ridiculously stacked San Francisco Giants team. It's, again, the top of the fifth now. There's a one-out single here by Sean Dunstan, or to bring Sean Dunstan to the plate. Here's Terry Smith on the call as the Giants turn the tides. Pull up Santiago last inning when he grounded the ball in the infield. The pitch. This one is lifted in the air down the left field side. Garrett Anderson is chasing, still chasing. It's gone. It's a home run. Anderson went back to the wall, and that one just got out. Maybe a couple rows back, and that was it. The low wall down in the corner. And Sean Dunstan, who hit only one home run during the entire regular season, no homers in the postseason, has hit a home run here to give the Giants a 2-0 lead. Sean Dunstan hadn't done much as far as power was concerned in 2002, but this two-run shot completely changes the momentum in favor of San Francisco, and it wouldn't stop there, as here comes Kenny Lofton to the plate. Three balls in one strike. And the pitch. That one is drilled in the gap in the right center field. That ball is hit hard. It'll bounce out to the wall. Lofton will easily get the second, and he's there with a double. Kevin Apier is upset. He can't believe that what was once a game in complete cruise control in his favor has now turned sour. Mike Sosha is out of the dugout in just his second year as the manager since 2000, and he's upset saying, come on, Sosh, what are you doing? As he puts in the young stud, Francisco Rodriguez, who has been absolutely incredible since coming up to the Angels in September. But Kenny Lofton steals third on Francisco Rodriguez. And it looks like the Angels are about to get out of it with just a 2-0 deficit. But it wasn't the case. And it's 2-0 Giants as they bat with two outs here in the fifth. And Lofton at third base. Fans making a lot of noise, trying to root on Frankie Rodriguez to slam the door here on Jeff Kent. 0-2 pitch, and that one bounces off the glove of the catcher, Benji Molina, and scoring on it easily from third base will be Kenny Lofton. That pitch was a heartbreaker and a backbreaker. It's now 3 to nothing in favor of the San Francisco Giants. And only took one more pitch to get the final out of the inning. And to make matters worse, the Angels can't do anything in the bottom of the inning. Another payoff pitch. Spezio bounces one right to first. JT Snow will flip to Ortiz. He gets to the bag in time. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for the Giants starter. So the Angels go down quietly here in the bottom of the fifth. No runs or hits, no errors, and nobody left. The sixth inning is next. 3-0 San Francisco.
The tides have ever so shifted in favor of San Francisco. It's three to nothing. The Angels have not gotten anything to go their way as far as offense is concerned against Russ Ortiz. We went to the top of the sixth, and the ever dangerous Barry Bonds is coming to the plate, who has absolutely tore the cover off the baseball throughout this postseason. Playing Bonds to pull, and he swings and crushes a ball to deep right field, and that one is way out of here. Boy, that was shades of the home run that he hit off of Troy Percival. It jumped out in a hurry out there into deep right. That one was out near the tunnel. And the fans tossed the ball back onto the field, but Bonds has hit another World Series home run, his fourth. Another absolute missile from Barry Bonds into right field as the fans get quiet in Anaheim. San Francisco fans are starting to feel it. The Giants are starting to feel it. After all, they have a 4-0 lead as they go into the bottom of the sixth. But the Angels, who have been a team that have come back time and time again and have garnered the nickname the Never Say Die Angels, are trailing by four as we go to the bottom of the sixth. It didn't take long for the Angels to get a little bit of a rally going here, started by Adam Kennedy. Ortiz studies the target of Santiago, the 1 0. A broken bat pop out behind second, and it drops out of the reach of Kent for a base hit. Boy, Kennedy had the bat get sawed off, but he was able to muscle it just enough out of the reach of Kent for the Angels' second hit of the night. A flare single, a David Eckstein ground out. Kennedy gets to second. It's the first time all night that the Angels get a base runner in scoring position. But now with two outs, Darren Erstad comes up. Higher strike these days. 3-1 pitch. And that's high. He walked him. So Erstad took what he got. He wasn't going to chase pitches out of the zone. He's on with a walk. Second one issued by Ortiz. All it takes is four pitches to put Erstad aboard and put two on with two out. For the Kingfish, Tim Salmon coming to the plate. Runners at first and second, two outs. Count even. Two and two on Salmon. Here's the next pitch. And that one's high. Where was it? That's a called third strike, says the home plate umpire, Tim McClellan, and that will end the inning. That pitch was called a strike. Salmon later in his own words would say that, man, that felt like that was the moment. The team felt down and out of this ball game. They failed to score with a couple runners on late in the contest. And it seems like the Angels season is three innings away from ending. And perhaps their best chance of the night is gone. Coming up next, the Giants are close to closing out the 2002 World Series in six games. They're looking to lock down the final couple of outs. We'll get to the rest of our oil history in just a second, but this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. We're back and better than ever. A new web interface for the start of basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's a 50% welcome bonus. Use promo code locked on to receive that bonus from basketball, football, baseball, postseason, NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2021. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. Radio AM 570 KLAC Los Angeles, home of Gil Gross mornings 5 till 9 a.m. Rory Marcus along with Terry Smith and our producer engineer Darren Chan at Edison Field in Anaheim. Rory and Terry and everybody in the ballpark and all Angels fans throughout the country are starting to feel this game slip away. As we headed to the top of the seventh, the Angels are just about dead and buried, trailing in this ball game, and it's just about to get a little bit worse. Rodriguez ready again. Here comes the right-handers one-two pitch. Line drive, that's a base hit into center. Kent drives in the run and it is five to nothing Giants. 
as Jeff Kent drives in run number five to make it five to nothing in the top of the seventh. The Giants' win expectancy has skyrocketed all the way to 94%. And in the bottom of the seventh, as the first out is recorded, Garrett Anderson grounds out to second to put one away in the bottom of the seventh, and it jumps to its highest peak, 96% win expectancy for the San Francisco Giants, the highest it would ever reach in game number six. But the Angels, again, the never-say-die Angels, have a little something to say about it. With one out, here comes Troy Gloss. Russ goes into his windup, and the pitch on the way to Gloss. Line drive, that's a base hit. Into left field. Bonds fields it on one knee. And Troy Gloss has just the third Angel hit, a one-out single. After that single, Rory Marcus recalls this team, thinking about 2002 as a whole, a team that had nothing to do with the playoffs, sniffing it in April, and here they are, the wild card team, all the way in Game 6 of the World Series. It can't go down this way, it can't end this way, and this is what Rory has to recall. They've had so many rallies this year, so many late-inning heroics. Do they have another one left in them? The crowd staying right where they are. They continue to make noise. They have faith. With a man on, here comes Brad Fulmer. Two and one to Fulmer. Ortiz delivers, and it's ripped into right field. That's a base hit. Gloss stops at second base, but for the first time tonight, the Angels have back-to-back hits. A couple of runners on, and with only one out here, the Angels are starting to rally late here in the bottom of the seventh inning. They still have to make up a five-run deficit, and they've been trying to get to Russ Ortiz, and they finally did. Here comes Dusty Baker out of the first base dugout and pulls Russ Ortiz. He gives him the baseball and says, a job well done. Thank you so much. Here's a souvenir, and we're going to lock this thing down for you. He puts in Felix Rodriguez, and Rodriguez is a guy that is taking his time on the mound and making sure every single pitch pitch is absolutely perfect. Scott Spezio comes to the plate with runners on, two of them, and only one out, and this is a long, long battle with Rodriguez until eventually Scott Spezio hits the biggest home run in Angels history. The count full to Spezio, three and two. Big pitch coming up. Rodriguez sets The 3-2 pitch is belted to right field. Back on it goes Sanders at the wall. He can't get it. Home run. And they're back in the ballgame. Scott Spezio, a three-run home run to right field. Into the corner. And it's the Giants five, the Angels three in the seventh. This home run makes it a five to three ball game here in the seventh inning. The San Francisco Giants have had a really good bullpen up to this point here in the World Series, and of course throughout the playoffs and the entirety of the 2002 season. Their swing expectancy in this moment is still 81 percent. They're not done. They are still in the clear looking to lock up this game. The Angels cannot get anything else there in the bottom of the seventh, but you cannot deny that they do have a little bit of a chance here in this moment. We go to the top of the eighth. Brendan Donnelly replaces Francisco Rodriguez after a rather shaky outing, a wild pitch, a couple runs, but Brendan Donnelly walks the first batter to Benito Santiago to lead off the inning. There's a runner aboard. But Donnelly gets out of it like he had so many times before in 2002. JT Snow flies out, Reggie Sanders and David Bell strike out. So the Angels still trailing 5-3 to three are going to the bottom of the 8th. It took a couple different pitchers to get through the 7th, but the Giants are still on with Tim Worrell. He's pitching and facing Darren Erstad to lead off the bottom of the 8th. Here's the pitch by Worrell. Drive hit into right field. That ball is crushed. That ball is gone. And they are within one in the bottom of the eighth. Five to four, San Francisco. Darren Erstad starts the eighth inning with a home run. 
Edison Field is rocking and the covers have blown off and no one knows what's going to happen at this point here in Game 6. The Angels trail now just 5-4 to four after trailing 5 to nothing for the first almost 7 full innings. And... Here comes Tim Salmon, the guy who had an opportunity not too long ago, coming to the plate, trying to keep the rally going. Here's the 1-0 to Salmon, a drive into center field, Lofton can't get it, base hit! Salmon is aboard at first, and the Angels call on a young rookie by the name of Sean Figgins to come and pinch run at the bag. Pitching coach is out, it's time to chat. That's when Garrett Anderson strolls up and keeps the party going. What a game. What a World Series. Here it comes 0-1. Popped on the left field line. A long run for Bonds. He won't get to it. Figgins to third base. Bonds stumbles and falls. Figgins stays at third. Anderson to second. Dusty Baker has seen enough. He pulls Worrell and puts in Rob Nen. With runners on and Anaheim rocking at this moment, here comes the moment. Again, I will send it off to Rory Marcus and Terry Smith. I'll give you the entirety of this call because this is one of the biggest moments, if not the biggest moment, in Angels history. Two balls and one strike to Troy Gloss. The never say die Angels giving their fans a thrill down the stretch in the bottom of the eighth inning. Two balls and one strike. Nen delivers and it's belted left field in the Too. That makes it hurt even that much more. A chink in the armor. The Giants have had such terrific bullpen work in the postseason in the World Series, but tonight they weren't able to hold on to a five run lead. What a rally for the Angels! In the bottom of the eighth inning, they've scored three times. The never say die angels have come all the way back and lead this ball game in the bottom of the eighth now, six to five, trailing five nothing. Everyone's stunned on both sides of the ball. The entire country is stunned at this moment. The never say die angels are alive and well when it looked like they were dead and buried, but they have come all the way back and now lead it. What win expectancy has skyrocketed for the Angels now? 90%. Remember, it was all the way up to 96% in favor of San Francisco just an inning ago. The flip of the script is complete here. 90% win expectancy after the double from Troy Gloss. The Angels do get runners on second and third, have a couple of pinch hitters, a bunt, but cannot bring up any more. We headed to the top of the ninth inning, and Troy Percival is on to face off with Tom Goodwin to begin the top of the ninth. Percy set. Here's the 2-2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Anaheim can feel it. San Francisco can feel it. Troy Percival can feel it in this moment. He is working quick and is pitching with a purpose. And that's when Kenny Lofton comes up. No team has ever come back from five runs down in an elimination game. But there's a pop fly on the left side. Gloss in foul ground makes the catch. With two down and just one to go, Rich Aurelia is coming to the plate. The Angels are looking to close this thing out and force a game seven. And of course, they're still relying on Troy Percival. And now the Angels are one strike away from forcing a seventh game tomorrow. And the thunderous crowd standing, cheering, banging together the red thunder sticks, trying to will Percy to a third out. A third strike, a seventh game, an incredible comeback win. They're one strike away from all of that. The 2-2 pitch, swung on and missed! He struck him out with a high fastball! The Angels win the game, 6-5! Oh, what a ball game for the Anaheim Angels! highlights, great moments, and fantastic wins. This 
tops them all. The Angels were faced with elimination. Their backs to the wall. And they come back. Three in the seventh. Three more in the eighth. Just another halo victory. The Angels' comeback is complete. They come and win Game 6 when it looked like they were dead and buried by a 6-5 final, never gave up, and have forced a Game 7 to be played the next day at 5 o'clock. And as we know, the Angels would go on to win Game 7 and the 2002 World Series. The biggest game, the greatest game, and the best comeback in Angels history here in this October night. And as you heard Rory Marcus say it, just another Halo victory, but as we know, that is absolutely not the case. This is the greatest game in Angels history, and we know it from this point on. What an incredible night in Anaheim and Edison Field, and what a game. What an absolute historic game, and one of the greatest games. No, it is the greatest game in Angels history. I hope you enjoyed today's oral history. It was so fun to go back and re-listen to this game. Oh my gosh, like hearing Rory and Terry on the call just brought back so many memories. I was a kid at the time. I was only nine years old when the Angels won this World Series. I remember watching this World Series with my dad. Um, and, and it was just such a cool moment. It was such a cool moment in Southern California sports history. The Lakers are so good in this moment as well. The Ducks are good. Um, and, and Anaheim baseball is just absolutely exploding. And this is just, it's just such a cool thing to revisit. And uh, 19 years later, it's it's really really awesome to to hear the original call um, with with Rory and, and Terry and I, I just really I really loved making this one so hopefully you guys enjoyed this one I want to thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day for your second listen check out Locked On MLB prospects host Aram Layton is a prospect encyclopedia and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow it's free and available on all platforms if you liked this episode please comment and like uh, subscribe here on YouTube and of course send us a tweet at Locked On Angels at Steve Granado. That's my account, G-R-A-N-A-D-O. Thanks so much. If you like this and you want to recall some of the memories of the 2002 World Series, tell us where you were. How did you listen? How did you watch? Were you at the game? I want to hear all about it. Give us a phone phone call and let me know. 714-409-6396. That's 714-409-6396. And of course, my merch is available online, redbubble.com. It is linked in the show notes alongside everything else that I talk about. We have a shirt, a sticker, a design that is immortalizing that Troy Gloss double with the moment of Roy Marcus calling the angels the Never Say Die Angels. It is available right now. If you're watching on YouTube, you are seeing that design on screen right now. It's really, really cool. Go to support my local brand. We have tons of good stuff. 2-7 merch is available now. Um, if you like this historical look at Angels Baseball and you want to check out more times of these things, I have an eight-part docuseries available right now on audio platforms everywhere called Our Game. That's O-U-R-G-A-M-E. We went back and covered 200 years of Angels, or not Angels, but baseball history. I talked a little bit about the Angels in that as well, um, but it's a whole lot of fun. It's uh, examining the Latin contributions to American baseball. We asked the question, who is the Latino Jackie Robinson? And we found out that the answer was extremely complicated. So eight-part docuseries available everywhere as we wind down the postseason. It's a good, uh, a good podcast to revisit, and you should definitely check it out. It is linked down below. That's going to do it for us in today's Locked On Angels. Thanks so much for joining us here in this one. This was so much fun to revisit the 2002 World Series, Game 6 in particular. Again, the greatest game in Angels history. This was a real fun oral history to do here. So thanks so much for checking us out. If you're new here, we have tons of content. Just look down below here in our uh, YouTube channel. Of course, that's YouTube.com and Locked On Angels is all you got to find to uh, a search to find us. So thanks so much for checking us out. We'll have more cool stuff throughout the off season. And of course we have tons available right now. Thanks so much guys. We'll talk to you next time. Later.